about that time. So, good morning. It's good to see you all. I had a wonderful trip to watch Kelsey get ordained. Um, and I believe you can still watch the service. So if you need a link to that, I can send it to you. But it was a really neat service to watch. I, I think ordination services are always really fun because you get so much as an as the ordained person, you get so much um, choice in the music and the readings, and you get to really personalize it. So um, her aunt, um, which I think most of you know, um, Kim Crestrebel, um, was the preacher. So that was a neat thing to watch, too, and got to put the stole on her. And um, her internship supervisor and organist from Texas flew to Baltimore area and flew to Maryland to participate in the service. So it was a really um, neat service to get to be a part of. So if you haven't seen it, you should watch it because it's great. So um, thank you to everyone who's been bringing in candy um, for our Halloween uh, uh, event coming up. We'll be giving Halloween candy out in the parking lot. Instead of doing our normal walking tacos, we've decided pre-packaged, COVID safe is a good plan. But um, if you would like to bring in candy still, we have more coming. So uh, feel free to send some in before Halloween. And if you want to come and just greet families as uh, they come in the parking lot, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Bible study is back on Wednesdays. Um, and we're also still collecting uh, stuff for the Lily Project. And if you need uh, information for Time and Talents and Stewardship, if they were in your newsletter, but they're also printed out on the table in the lounge. We also wanted to add the kitchen committee is not on there. Karen's nodding at me. So if you would like to be part of the kitchen committee, and you'll hear more about that in one of our upcoming talks, um, just write in that you're interested on it, and we will make sure you get checked on that list. So speaking of stewardship, we have a couple talk this morning. So are you ready to do it? <laughs> She's like, yes, I am. So Chris is going to talk about counting. Uh, since that is an important part of what we do on Sunday mornings, and she is a veteran at it, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you. 
And yeah, we make sure that you count with somebody who's done it before so they can train and help out. So thank you so much for speaking about it. So, all right, I think that is all I have in the way of announcements other than to say thank you to Dan and Bobby who helped out while I wasn't here last week. So thanks Dan for filling in and Bobby for running the technology and all that fun. So, all right, we'll begin with our prelude now. Our faces away from injustice and oppression, 
We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. And lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes us righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Please, please. We will now have our apostolic reading. <laughs> you can tell I've taken a week off, right? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples upon earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom, and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. All right. <laughs> the first reading is from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we encountered him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. And we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When he makes his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and he will prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light, he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many the righteous, and he shall bear all their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made an intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The song for the day is Psalm 91. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no people will call you, nor shall the come here your God. For God will give the angels charge over you, to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them, because they know my name. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them, and show them my salvation. The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not pre presume to take this honor, 
but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron thought. For also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel for today is according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at the right hand, at my right hand or at my left, is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And what Whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So every Tuesday, I attend text study with other local pastors and Episcopalian priests. And this week, we heard again a lot of, all right, come on, James and John, can you get it together? How ridiculous can you be? And I want to give a little bit of context to this reading. Right before this, we have again the third passion prediction from Mark. So now Jesus has said multiple times, hey guys. I'm going to go to Jerusalem and die. And this is what being the Messiah looks like. And as soon as he gets done talking about that, they're like, okay, but like the right and left hand, who has that position? Could we have that place? Now, Mark is really good at framing things and how he structures his book. So there's a reason how he does this. He talks about how a blind person gets healed. Then there are three predictions about going to Jerusalem and dying. And then at the end of those predictions, there's another story about a blind person being healed. So the blind people finally see. And that speaks to the idea that everyone will have their eyes open. But maybe not yet. And honestly, as much as we give James and John and the other disciples a bad rep sometimes, um, I'm right there with them occasionally. Wouldn't it be great to have a God that's powerful and fixes everything immediately for you, whose glory and power and supermanish qualities are what we think of? A God that swoops in and saves the day whenever something goes awry. A God who can turn things around and make it better. 
And that's what James and John are hoping for. And so when they ask to be seated at these places of honor in Christ's glory, I really can't blame them. The idea of Good Friday, the idea of a God who suffers and dies on a cross, a God who is in pain and broken and spit on and demeaned, that is so far from what they are able to imagine or comprehend. And that's what we are talking about today. I read a commentary this week that said that we like to think of God as a cross between a superhero and Santa Claus. Someone who can snap his fingers and all is well. Someone who grants us whatever it is that we've been praying for, fixing everything for us with ease. And I will say that there are times when I would really like that as a Christian. I honestly thought that Iron Man or Powerful God is the type of God that I want to cling to as well. And in a few weeks, we'll be hearing about how Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And if that isn't an amazing display of power, I don't really know what is. But I also can say that through events in my life and as I've pastored over the years, I've also come to appreciate a God who weeps, a God who understands broken hearts, a God who knows all about sacrifice and loss. This is the God that we proclaim and that we worship. He's not always this mighty entity who waves his hands and all is well. This is a God that sits with us when we hurt and when we are at a loss, and who knows that feeling intimately. As Debbie Thomas wrote in her commentary this week, we will contemplate a God who enters humanity red-faced and crying. A God whose greatest displays of power include riding on a donkey, washing dirty feet, hanging on a cross, and frying fish on a beach for his friends. This God who empties himself of all privilege, the God who perpetually pours himself out and surrenders his own life for his loved ones. This is the complexity of our God. A God who is perfect in vulnerability, in weakness, in sacrifice, and yet at the same time is all-powerful. And so, this is the lesson that James and John will learn too. They will be challenged by the same complexity and good news that we are. He did not sit enthroned in heaven, observing from afar, but instead he came to us to save us in ways that serve and teach and sacrifice. As our Isaiah reading says today, Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was, uh, he was taken away. And who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Who could have imagined his future? Who could have seen this coming? Not James and John, and sometimes still not us. So what does it 
mean to worship a God like this? Well, I think it first means that we are called to respond as Jesus did to James and John. What can I do for you? If Christ is our example, if Christ who lowers himself and pours himself out for the whole world is who we follow, then we are called to do the same. Glory found in service. Glory shown through weakness and vulnerability. Glory tied to the giving up of ourselves. Jesus says that James and John will understand and will learn the same lesson through their lives, and they do. But we are also called into this broken world to be people who reach out, asking what we can do to bring the kingdom of God to this place here and now. What can we do to enact justice? What can we do to help others in our community? What can we do to show others welcome and hope when the church has so often turned them away before? What can we do to serve others through our actions and our words, our priorities and our gifts? For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give himself and his life as a ransom for many. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll now stand and confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning, cause to the ministry in its many forms, and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Have mercy and prayer. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that the waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. In your mercy, Suffer one for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O God. Merciful One, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness especially Bob, Doreen, Leona, Erlene, Jan, Sarah, Joanne, Barb, Judy, Sandy, Pastor Mumford, Joan, Sue, Karen, Patricia, Jim, Nick, Brian, Denise, Dr. Sion, Cindy, Kay, Pastor Washer, Bishop, Bishop Lorenzo, Pat, Brad, Lucy, Ron, Sue, Helen, Lisa, Nancy, Jamie, Chase, and Miriam, that all may be healed. Hear us, O God. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitalities of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office, volunteers, bakers, counters, committee, and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, Nurtures and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O God. 
Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witnesses of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O God. Hear us, confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace by waving, peace sign, that sort of thing. <laughs>
who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, power and might, heaven and earth. for you.
strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Broken by in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crowns of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. 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 And just to say that we are constantly innovating during the pandemic, I came up and I thought that Yvonne had brought salt with her for some reason, but it was powder so we could get our gloves in easier. So. And it works really well, so we're always learning something new. So. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.